Hello and welcome to the next part of our how-to series with Game Maker 2 and if you watched the previous video you would know that we wrote some code for checking input from the keyboard and we test that by seeing the output in the output window and then we wrote some pseudocode explaining how we would use that output to actually move the object on the screen either left or right. In this video we are going to fill out that pseudocode and make it real code and then hopefully have a player that moves left and right and that will be the basis of movement for your player. That will be essentially how the steps you take to try and move your player and we will summarize at the end. Okay, so let's get to it. So we have on screen captured the move number, whether it be zero, which is no movement, one, which is move right, and minus one or minus one, which is move left. The first thing we decided to do was reset X speed to zero because X speed retains its value even after step has finished. So when the next step event happens, X speed is still the previous value. And if we're adding to it, it's just gonna get higher and higher and higher and higher and higher, which means the player is gonna get faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. Um, and will will simply not work because it will just disappear off the screen super fast or will hit the edge of the screen going mega mega fast. So we need to reset speed to zero every time we come into the step event. That is super easy. All we do is say x speed equals zero. Uh, it could not be simpler than that. In fact, it doesn't get simpler than that. So x speed equals zero. Now, the next bit, slightly more tricky, but not tricky. If move horizontal equals one, then add three to X speed. Okay, let's do this underneath, just to be consistent. So we want a if statement, otherwise known as a conditional statement, which says, if this is true, then do this. So an example, if, I am hungry, then go and get some food. Or if I have finished work for the day, then go home. Or if I am tired, then go to bed. So you guys, you understand this, you get this. There's nothing about what I just said you don't understand um, because you learned those, those conditional statements when you were very little. You understood them when you were very little. Translating them to code is no more difficult than understanding them when you're like three years old. Seriously, just believe me. Sometimes I think we don't, we don't think we can code. Therefore, we will always say, I don't understand what I'm doing or I don't understand it because we've kind of believed this, this lie that we can't code and it's really complicated. Well, it isn't, it isn't at all. It's not complicated. It's merely translating English to code. Um, and, you know, often we just have to retrain our brains to think, well, actually, no, I can do it. It's just a matter of learning something. Seriously, a lot of the maths you will do after, say, year, even after year eight, will be much more complex than what we're doing right now. Most of the maths. Um, if you do anything like physics or chemistry, it's way harder than this. Anyway, I'm going off at tangent, so <laughs> I'm going to come back. So the code translates like this. If, that's your if statement, and we need to do the check inside a pair of brackets. So the check is whether move horizontal equals one. So we say if move horizontal equals one. And if you are comparing 
two things. We're comparing move horizontal to the number one. Comparison always means you use two equals. We say if move horizontal equals one, but we use two equals for this. If we use one equals, we only use one equals where we are setting the value of a variable like x speed to whatever's on the right hand side of the equals to zero. We are setting x speed, the left hand side, to the right hand side here, and we use one equals. When we are comparing two values, we use two equals. Okay? So if move horizontal equals one, then and the then happens inside squiggly brackets. The if statement always looks like this. If, then a pair of normal brackets with the condition inside, then a pair of squiggly brackets with some code inside that will only execute if move horizontal does equal one. Or put another way, if the condition inside the brackets is true. So if move horizontal equals one, then we want to we want to add three to x speed. But if move horizontal does not equal one, we do not want to do that. So if move horizontal does not equal one, then it will not execute the code in here anyway. So so we're we're all good. So we just add three to x speed, and that is very, very simple. We say x speed equals three. In fact, I'm going to amend that slightly, and this is where we, you always iterate what you do in code. And I, I think I've, although I've kind of said the right thing here, it's not exactly correct. We really want to set x speed to 3, so I'm actually going to change that. It doesn't really matter that I got it wrong for this example um, because that's really how you improve anything. You take a stab at it and if it's slightly wrong you, you amend it. So I'm not going over and re-editing the last video. I'm going to leave it at it as it was because at that point I believe that pseudocode was correct and here when I'm doing it the pseudocodes help me to understand I need to just say set x speed to 3. Um, which I do like this, x speed equals 3, set the left hand side to the right hand side. So x speed will now be equal to 3 at this point, only if move horizontal is equal to 1. Right, now this bit, you should be able to do this now without me saying a single thing. The only thing I would need to say is to say, well, we need an else. Because it's else if, because it's if this is true, then do this, otherwise, or else, do this if move horizontal equals minus one so equals equals minus one then squiggly brackets do whatever's in here um, set x speed to minus three which is simply x speed equals minus 3. Okay, so we're getting somewhere now. The last thing we have to do is add x speed to x. So x is an inbuilt variable. Um, let me just show you some inbuilt variables. So if I say image, here we go, it comes up immediately with all the inbuilt variables there. They're green. We know an inbuilt variable because it's green. So x means the x coordinate of the object. And when that changes, GameMaker will actually redraw the object in the new position. So we want to say x equals x speed plus 3. So let's do it like this. x speed plus 3. We'll do it the simpler way. So if it's... Uh, do we want to say that? No, we want to say, sorry, x equals x plus 3, sorry. In fact, we don't even want to say that at all. We want to say x equals x plus x speed. So you see, I'm just getting out ahead of myself and doing it wrong. So, but, you know, we get there. So x equals x plus x speed, because we've already added 3 to x speed. So 
if x is 32, which I think it was in its original position, oh no, it's somewhere else now, so I'm just going to see what it is. Um, x is at 162. So if x is 162, adding 3 to it, if I press, press the right key, x speed will be 3. Adding 3 to x means it'll be, what, 106, what did I say? So if 162, so it'll be 165 in this frame. Okay, and that's all we need to do. So GameMaker, the drawing engine, will just redraw the object player at 165 in the coordinate space. So it has moved three pixels in one frame. And that's how we do movement. So we've got to check this to make sure it works, right? Otherwise it won't be any good. So let's run it. All right, so I'm not pressing anything. Let's put it here so we can see, hopefully we can see everything we need to. I'm not pressing anything and the output is telling us zero. All sounds good. If I press the right key, we know the output is going to be one. And we know then the next bit of code is going to say, if move horizontal equals one, which it does, set x speed to three. And the next bit of code is going to add x speed to x. So hopefully it will move three pixels. But if I hold my key down, it's going to keep on adding three, okay? Because move horizontal will continually be one, as we'll see from the output. And if move horizontal equals one will be true, so we'll continually be setting x speed to three. Therefore, we'll continually be adding, be adding x speed to x, as in three to x. So x will keep on increasing by three every frame. Okay, so let's try it. Let's hold the right key down. And there we go. Boom. Hopefully you saw the one as well. Now I'm going to press the left key and it's going to do everything in reverse. So it's move horizontal would be minus one. We'll execute the else if move horizontal equals minus one, then x speed equals minus three. And we will say x equals x plus minus three. So it'll take three off of x. So GameMaker will redraw the player object in the new coordinate, which is minus three to where it is, three to the left. If we hold that key down, it will keep doing it every frame. Let's try it. It's minus one and it's moving left. All right, let's try it again. One and it's moving right. Minus one, it's moving left. One and it's moving right. Minus one and it's moving left. Okay, hopefully you see exactly how this is working. I think this is the, the best explanation I can give. I don't think I can give I don't think I can give a better one than this. Um, so we'll leave it there and hopefully by the end of either this video or this session or whatever, uh, you guys will have a moving player, which will be the basis upon which we go forward um and build in jumping build in climbing like wall climbs or rope climbs build build ladder climbs um, but we start here we're just left and right okay so what you can do next is you can go out onto the internet find a player who is the size of the square and make sure that player has different sprites for running or, or walking, jumping, climbing, depending on your game. If you've got a game that requires jumping, a platformer left to right, or platformer vertical, or platformer single, single room, quick restart, then you will probably need to jump. If you're doing a top-down game, then you just need... You don't need jump, you only need north, south, east and west. So uh, you will need to add in some code for move vertical, 
which will be almost exactly the same underneath here. And then you will also need to check for move vertical and you will need to put y equals y plus y speed and reset y speed. So super easy to add the vertical component to this. It's just literally copying what you've done and um, changing it to, to vertical and y. So I'll leave it there and let's see what happens. We'll see you in the next video.